Chris says, I need to better understand the concept of attic time, to be honest. I find elements of the program proclaiming a specific timeline, that is, modules centered around 90 days, six months to one year, contradicting with not counting days and still progressing forward despite slips. You can find an episode on addict time on the Porn Reboot podcast. Just go ahead and search for it. But what I mean by addict time is simply the idea that many men who are struggling with a compulsive sexual behavior have a tendency to warp time. Like the way we view time is not chronological, so to speak, right? And that's because we connect a lot of emotions with time, right? Especially when you're impulsive. So for instance, if you stay off pornography for a while, let's say you've stayed off pornography for nine, 10 days, but in the past, you know that you have a pattern, right? And let's say your pattern is every single week, every seven days, you know that you slip. Let's just use that as a hypothetical example. However, because that's what you're used to, that is the timeline within which you live. So you live in this timeline of I slip every seven days or once or twice or three times. When that timeline changes for whatever reason, you join the program and suddenly you go more than seven days, it's eight days. Subconsciously, you're still keeping track of it. Whether we say you don't count or whatever, it takes a while to get to the point that you stop counting. It's a habit you have to build. But because you've broken out of that seven day thing and you're in day eight and day nine, you become hyper aware of it. What does this mean? It means that day eight is very precious to you because you're like, wow, it's the first time I've gotten to eight days. Day nine becomes precious to you and you put more focus on day eight, nine, 10. And every day after your seven days, you put more attention on it. This intention makes you more present, not present during the day, but more aware of the day. And thus each day after day seven seems longer. But by the time you get to 10 days, 11 days, 12 days, those days have exceeded the amount of seven days in your head because you're so aware that you didn't slip. You've put so much importance to the day. Those days after seven days seem much longer than the preceding seven days. Are you guys with me on this? That's what I mean by addict time. And then often when I ask brothers on day 12 or day 13, which is usually when by day 12 or th day 13, you actually now have to physically count the number of days because it's past two days, three days, four days, past the seven days. But when you stop counting at that point, you know, it's within two weeks. When you're asked, how long has it been for you? You're going to say something like two weeks, right? Sometimes it feels like three weeks. Sometimes it just feels like a long time. And there's also an unconscious conflict. There's a fear of letting go of, you know, like all those days, there's a fear of slipping or relapsing after the seven days. So your subconscious mind puts a lot more importance on those days and kind of stretches them out in an effort to make it like, oh my God, you're doing so well. You're doing so well. You're staying off this. Let's hold on to this precious few days. And the more precious it is, the larger it seems. And it's kind of like a time illusion. That's what I mean by addict time. We lose track of it, but we also want to add one more thing to it. One thing that messes this up is the opposite of it. The opposite of it is when we are in a slip or we are in a relapse, when you're relapsing and you have multiple tabs open and you're doing this every day, you are now focusing on the negative aspect of it. And you're doing the same thing you do with the positive. The days you have off pornography, you're putting so much positive attachment and awareness to it. But on the days that you're slipping, you're like, oh my God, I've been in a relapse. It really sucks. I've been in a relapse. You're now putting a lot of negative impact on it. And you may have just experienced a relapse where you masturbated three or four times, right? But again, you put such a negative impact on it on those three or four times you masturbated in one day that it now feels like a very long period of time. And as we vacillate, those of you who use willpower between all the days of your relapse and the days where you're off it, as you jump between both of them, you constantly warp your perception of time, right? So this is how addict time kind of throws us off. And people might think that counting is the, how would I put it, is the antidote to that. 
But counting is not the antidote to that because counting, because we already put so much importance on the negative part and the positive part, counting for us is going to just add more emotion to it, right? What's the emotion when you start counting? When you start counting the positive days you've been off pornography, you become more afraid of the negative days. Oh my God, I do. I'm so far away from the negative. I don't want to be there. And then you start counting towards an ideal, a place that you hope to be, but you don't know what that place is like because you've never been there. So even if you arrive, you're never going to be happy because, <laughs> because you're counting towards something you've never been towards. So counting just actually in reality doesn't even make any sense. Right now, when I throw out numbers, when I say six months to a year, or when I say 90 days, all of this is based on what I've observed, not just in myself anymore, but at this point, it is in thousands of clients. I've observed that using again, this is using our system, gentlemen, this is not using willpower, using willpower. I have no authority on that because there is no system. There's no coping strategy. There is no data from brothers that has been measured using willpower. That's why I'm not a big fan of NoFap or SAA. But I know that when brothers use our system and implement it, we have a range of time. The biggest range of time is a year and a half to two years. This is very, very specific because we have data since 2012. And we have brothers who are out there and who are in the program who can corroborate this, who can say yes. When I follow the system roughly, not even strictly every day, within a year and a half to two years, I gain control of my behavior and my brain rewired. We also have brothers who come in and they have the ability to focus for the most part, to the best of the ability for roughly about, it's actually more than 90 days, to be honest with you guys. If we're very honest, if we take in the days that brothers are participating, the days they're slacking off, the days that you're feeling a little bit depressed, that you can't stick with the program, it's more like four months to be as accurate as possible. But within that time period, but let's say like, yeah, that's the amount of time that it takes for me to control my behavior, which means that when I experience an urge that is for pornography, I experience the urge to medicate something, like I got this, like I can actually use the coping strategies and I will stop myself from acting out. I'm implementing a very specific habit and I'm able to stick by the lifestyle that I've created for myself. So Chris, I don't know if you're there. I'm just breaking this down for you to understand. And I think I explained the six months to one year part. With this being said, in the implementation program, there's a core difference between it and the intensive program. And that is in the intensive program, brothers have direct access to myself. And we actually have other coaches now who are in the program. But what that means is that on a one-on-one -on -one basis, we work with brothers individually in the intensive program. So their timelines are a lot more specific and they are able to admit because we're working one-on-one. -on -one, they're like, yeah, dude. So for the past two weeks, bro, I'll be very honest with you. <laughs> I've not been serious about my reboots. So I know that I've done this a couple of times. I've kind of slacked off. So I know I cannot expect anything to happen in 90 days. Like I know that my timeline is going to be a little bit different. In the implementation program, you get access to the entire system, but I want you guys to remember something. This is also for Chris. Remember that you are an individual. In general, as long as you follow the program, you're still gonna fall within those timelines. But because you don't have direct one-on-one -on -one access to me to like work with you every single day, like that's literally impossible, you have to be able to keep track of your own progress and your progress comes in behavioral change. That's what you're measuring. You're not counting days. You are keeping track of your behavioral change. And you're like, well, how do I do that? Well, that's the reason why we have very specific tools that you use. And you have to be able to go back using something like the reboot baseline to check in on yourself once in a while. Sometimes I'm able to do it for brothers who have been very active in the program. And you'll see me do that. Like I'll literally go back through all your posts, as long as you're not deleting your posts. And I'll say like, Hey, I followed, like, for example, Muhammad Ali is with us here today. Muhammad has been very, very consistent in tracking his history within the group. As a result, I am able to literally go back through Muhammad Ali's history. Muhammad, if you don't mind my saying this, I'm not going to say anything specific or anything we've discussed in private, but I'm able to track it. There are some specific brothers. As long as there's a history of this, I'm able to go back and we can track and I can tell brothers where they are in their reboot, or I can give it as a rough guide as well. But 
the truth is you can do this on your own. An example would be somebody like right here, the brother who asked the first question, who was Aaron Valentine, right? This is a brother just like you guys. He's come in and he's very, very clear. He says, I'm in control, right? And the last time I viewed porn and masturbated was in November. I'm great at controlling fantasy and objectification is rare too. Now his entire question, which you guys can go and read, is actually a question that's not about like, I'm struggling with this. His question in reality is about where am I in my reboot? How do I know it is about where am I in my reboot? Because the question he ends asking is, do you have any suggestions as to what I can do to get back that old mindset? I feel I still have cravings. I know I'm committed to ending my behavior, but that strong feeling of control and motivation hasn't been there by before. Anytime a brother has been in control of their behavior and they've been doing the same thing over and over again, and they have controlled their behavior, but suddenly they run into a roadblock where their sexual behavior is coming up again, it means that in most cases, you are transitioning from one stage to another stage. It means that it is probably time for you to start changing perhaps your lifestyle. In some cases, brothers have moved from the habit stage to the lifestyle stage. Again, that's not a stage. This is just generalized over the different stages. It means that there's something that needs to be changed. And I'll often ask you during the live Q&A, give me more context and I'll be very specific with it. What is your intimacy like? What is intimacy in your life like? Why? Because I remember Aaron Valentine's questions. I know what he talks about. Most brothers ask questions about the same issues in their life. It's not that complex for me anyway. So for most brothers, there are only two or three issues that show up as a repeated theme. And it's these issues that eventually need to be resolved for them to stay off pornography. It's the same for everybody. We rarely have brothers who have like a whole host of issues. You might think you do, but they're only going to be one or two things. But I'm getting off the point with responding to Chris.